Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, we're delighted to be uh, holding the first of our hero hangouts today uh, with a man who is a true British filmmaking hero. He is one of the most prolific and talented filmmakers around. He's a true quadruple threat. Take that triple threats. He's a quadruple threat. He's an actor, he's a writer, producer and director. Please welcome Noel Clark. Hello, sir. Good to see you. Yeah, uh, you too. Then, so how did you get into film in the first place? And what was it that, that you wanted to do? As, you, as a kid growing up watching movies, you think, okay, I want to be an actor, or how do these get made? I'd like to be a director. What was it first for you? Well, acting was the first thing for me. Yeah. It was what I always wanted to do. I was raised um, in the Kidderhood area. That's where I grew up. That's mm -hmm. why that film was based around my, me and my friends. Um, um, and... You know, I was a single parent, council estate, and, and so my mother would work a lot. And, you know, I think now you'd be put in jail for, like, leaving your kid. But she would come home, make sure I was all right after school, put the food down, say, da 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 this is here, this is here, this is here, here's the phone if you need to call anything, I have to, I have to go to work. Yeah. You know, put the chain on the door, don't let anyone in until I come home. And you watch films and you watch TV. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you have yeah. your little bowl of apple and fruit and you just watch your TV. And, <laughs> and you know, I watched a lot of films and... I watched a lot of TV and I just knew that I wanted to act. And then later on in life, around 16, 17, in sixth form college, when I was li sort of living the kid adulthood stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. and it wasn't a gang, it was just a group of friends, one of which is now a producer that works with us and sitting over there. Um, it was st films like Pulp Fiction and we had the really young media teacher, a media teacher called Andy Jones, who, who had, it was his first job out of university and he was our, we were 16, 17, and, you know, they were like, right, the curriculum this year will be studying film, we're going Shakespeare in love. And I was like, I want to be an actor, I don't care about this. I'll, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take media anyway, because I want to understand the business. Yeah. Shakespeare in love, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when the, the boss, the head of the year teacher left, or whatever they're called, he said, guys, I've got this really cool video I want you to watch called Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He was like that, Andy Jones, like, oh, yeah, it's really, it's Pulp Fiction, and, it's, and his shirt was open, he's like, yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, I still speak to him now, he emailed me yesterday. I still speak to him now, good friends. Um, I still call him Sir, which he doesn't like. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I watched Pulp Fiction, and then I watched Clerks. Yeah. Then I watched Go, Doug Lyman film. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it blew my mind. Yeah. And I came in on the next, the weekend, on the after the weekend, I said, I didn't know you could tell, I didn't know you could make films like that. I thought you just had to go like, here's the beginning, here's the end. And he said, yeah, you know, it is like that, but actually you can do what you want, man. <laughs> he was like a beatnik teacher, <laughs> even in life. And, uh, and so once he said that, I was like, my God, I didn't know we could do what we liked. And then I was like, I want to make films too. Yeah. I want to make films. And suddenly I was like, I didn't know we could do that. And then Kevin Smith did Clerks. Yeah. And there was these, these guys in Clerks working behind the counter, talking about who sucked whose mum's titties and all this kind of stuff. Excuse me, ladies. Um, <laughs> that's what it was about, I'm afraid. You know, look it up. Look it up. And I was like, and you know, all these old people are like, this is atrocious. Who talks like that? And I was like, I talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> me and my friends talk like that. I talked about sucking his mum's titties last week. Like, I really did. Didn't I? Didn't I? And he's like, yeah, you did, man. You did. <laughs> And I was like, I, blew, it didn't, I didn't know you could do that. I thought films, were, you know, this is a film, and, you know, or it was big like Star Wars. And that's when I started thinking about ideas, and later that whole evolution and that whole thought became kid adulthood, mm. adulthood, and 4321, which is very inspired by Go and Pulp Fiction and that kind of oh, yeah. thing. And, and that's where that all came from. I read an interview with you where you said that you were, um, you look back at the first series of Doctor Who and you thought you were bad at it. Terrible, yeah, terrible. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, that, that part of that reason, like flying back, from, flying back from Thailand and going straight on set and, you know, missing rehearsals or missing stuff like that. And, you know, the director, who's, a, who's great, and he actually is a friend of mine, but the director's got, he's got instructions to concentrate on people. Yeah. You know, there's, on the call sheet, there's number one, there's number two, and then you, you whatever number. And so, and they've rehearsed it, and, and they're like, well, you're like, what's the tone of the show? So, well, it's a family show, we want it to be funny. And they are great, so we want you to run and you hit the wall and have a bucket on your foot and stuff. And you're like, but everyone else looks pretty serious. Are you sure I should <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Like, well, he, he's not smiling though. Yeah, yeah, just hit, just, just run into the wall and fall down. You sure? Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? And you just do it and you're like, then the next day it's a really cool shot and Barrowman's there and everyone's there and you're like, should I have this bucket on my foot? No, like, yeah, just, just put the bucket on your foot and, oh, all right, he doesn't have a bucket in his foot though. 
And then consequently, I just thought it was terrible. Like, not the show, yeah. but the, the, the... I mean, it worked in the end. It worked in the end for the reason that it helped the overall arc of the character yeah. from being complete buffoon, yeah. you know, and absolutely hated by most people yeah. to going on the journey that the character went on. But I mean, I, I think... But even the tone of those... The first block that we shot was Rose, Aliens of London, and World War Three, And you can tell. You can tell that, that even though they're, they're one, four, and five. Mm. Two Dog Claw. Not Two Dog Claw, was it? Okay. Human IMDb. Yeah, I think even though they were one, four, and five, they were shot as a block. Yeah. Uh, but you can tell. You can tell those three were the first three because, like, I'm terrible, right? But they're also, <laughs> they're also a little bit more... They're a little bit more humorous than when Dalek and stuff came in and started yeah. getting really dark. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then what's his name? Are you my mommy? That freaky little guy. I'd fucking punch that kid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you my mommy? I'm fucking not your mommy, boy. Get out of here. <laughs> Wouldn't that freak you out? That kid turned up at your doorstep. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tricky gig, though, because. Uh... <laughs> He's not here. That was, that was acting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a tricky gig, though, because the first thing I remember ever seeing you in was that first Doctor Who episode, yeah. where you were eaten by a bin. Yeah, do you um, know? You, and, yeah. Like, and, then, and then he's plastic, yeah. and she doesn't know it. This is, my, <laughs> this is my point. This is my point about that block. <laughs> I mean, how do, you know, how do you get into that character? I'm being eaten by a bin. How do you do that? I mean, that's difficult. Well, I was jet-lagged from Thailand, and they're like, <laughs> right, the bin's going to eat you. Are you sure I should be eaten by the bin? Because he's not, he just, just get eaten by the bin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, but like, it, yeah, okay. All right, but you know what I mean? And it, it is what it is. Yeah. But going back to the, the, the idea of the anomaly being an action film and, you know, these action sequences, that, you know, that you're, that you're in as well. Yeah. I mean, how difficult was it? Because they're, they're very meticulously choreographed. Yeah, um, very difficult. Yeah. I wanted to try and do something different with the action sequences because, you know, when you're making a film at a low budget, but you're it's looking as slick as a bigger budget film, um, you kind of, you're already gonna get compared to it, and it is getting compared to it. I mean, I, you know, not a lot of people are loving it, obviously, like the, the, the elitist ones, um, but um, it, it kind of, it's getting compared to like Matrix and Inception, like a low rent version of Matrix, a low rent version of Inception, or a poor man's raid, or a, like it's 200 times less the budget. <laughs> and if that's the only thing you can compare it to, then, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? But in yeah. terms of the action sequence, in terms of the action sequences, I wanted to do something different because I feel like fighting has evolved so much since Jason Bourne first stood there with those cops and done yes. that bam, 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 and we were like, "What the fuck did he just do?" And we were around it. That that style has evolved to the point where they they swing, drop frames, and you're on your floor. They cut they cut so fast. Yeah, you can't see. And it's yeah. just like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm I'm sick of it now. I want to try and do something different, you know. And it's not—it's not a low rent matrix. It's, they never shot a fight in one take, in one move. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it's the anomaly, and it is what it is. It is its own thing, and it's something special. And whether you like the story or not, or the script or not, when you look at it and you see the choreography and the the camera moves and positions that goes into those fight scenes, I mean, you get one move wrong in that fight scene, even if it's the last one. You have to start again. Yeah, and like, yeah. this happened a few times and you're just like, and you're bruised. You've got your golf ball sized bruises or you've been hit in the jaw and you can't eat for two days or whatever. And you know, but you just have to just keep going until you get it right or 95% or, or, or right. You know, they're Jeez. never perfect. And uh, no major injuries, no Harrison Ford-esque trips to the hospital? Um, not quite, nearly. I did get one bruise here, which was like a golf ball size. And because in the corridor, I fight this guy who's in real life was a five time world kickboxing champion. <laughs> and so, and I was wearing a shirt, but my sleeves were rolled up. So there was no padding. So he's kicking and I got to block it. And like he caught me and his bruise just came up like that. But it had no color. It was just like a big ball. And I was like, oh, and we we're pushing it and pushing it. And the, oh, me the, the medic came. He's like, I think your capillary, one of your capillaries is blocked. Oh, naturally. I was like, but there's no color. Is he sure it's a bruise or something else? He said, yeah, yeah. And he pushed it and then it popped. And it went, it went down, it went down, and then all the blood color, all the bruise color just came on my whole forearm. So that was one. And then the near hospital one was, in one of the earlier scenes, I fight a guy called Michael Bisping, who is a UFC fighter. That's the cage fighting thing. He's in the UFC, he really is in the UFC. 
And so I'm fighting him in this thing, and we did, we're on take three, and we get to the end, and he just swings and just goes and hits me right there, right on the jaw. Like he was supposed to do the swing, but obviously I was supposed to move, and I just I didn't move quick enough, just bang, straight down. <laughs> and then um, I just heard the medic, I heard them shout medic, and everyone runs in and stuff like that. And I mean, he, like, I got back up, but my jaw couldn't close. <laughs> oh my God. And I thought it was broken, and like we were really panicking because I was thinking about my finance guy going, Oh God. Ah, I told you, man. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I was thinking about him. I just immediately is in my head like, no, don't be there. And it wasn't broken. But we didn't go to hospital. The medic said it wasn't broken. But I couldn't close my back teeth for like four days. And so I had to drink soup for four days. Oh, my God. And uh, thanks so much for coming. Thanks, of course. No Clark. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Cheers, man. Thanks, man. <laughs>